our Lenten journey. Welcome to those gathered here in the Abbey and welcome to all those joining us online from around the world. As we gather this morning, your service sheet will guide you through our worship and if you're joining us online, you can download that service sheet from our website. This morning at the beginning of half term, uh, for our children and young people, there's the wonderful red carpet to your left at, on the north side, full of activities. There are our children's activity bags. Diddy Disciples are doing their thing, and uh, if uh, you are new here at the Abbey and you'd like to join in one of those activities, please ask someone around you and they'll know where to guide you. Welcome to you all as we gather in worship this morning. We keep some moments of quiet now as our worship soon begins.
loved the world that he sent his son to be our saviour, forgive you your sins and make you holy to serve him in the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, your son battled with the powers of darkness and grew closer to you in the desert. Help us to use these days to grow in wisdom and prayer, that we may witness to your saving love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. animals and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth, God said. This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, 
and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I have the privilege of being the chaplain to the New Zealand Society in the United Kingdom. You will have noticed there's quite a lot of us here, and certainly as I did when I was a young lawyer working in London, there's a cohort of young Kiwis and Aussies and others working for their allotted three years, and some with British citizenship last a bit longer. As an aside, I hope you're catching the wonderful documentary on Channel 4 at the moment about the great outdoors in New Zealand. I'm happy to consult on holiday itineraries. There I've done my plug. The nation of Aotearoa New Zealand is founded on a treaty between the indigenous people of New Zealand and the Crown. In February is Waitangi Day. New Zealand Day, the anniversary of the day on which in 1841 that treaty was signed. That treaty is a covenant. It has the power and has for years long to change lives and indeed direct the course of a nation. It is important. As we begin our journey of Lent, our scripture readings this morning bring us back to the truth of an eternal covenant and what it means for all creation, for all time. As it does traditionally on the first Sunday of Lent, alongside the gospel account of Jesus' temptation, this year in Mark's Gospel, with his usual precision and economy of words, the lectionary brings us part of the story of Noah and the flood, and in particular, God's promise, God's covenant with Noah, and through him with all creation. Expressed, when we pause to think about it, in terms of God, what God will not do, that God's resolution of human sin and the consequential brokenness of the world will never again come in this way of complete destruction. The fact that the covenant only places obligations on God at this point and not on humanity demonstrates for us also that the ultimate power of redemption the grace of salvation to restore creation rests in God. And we note that the promise, the covenant, is between God and the whole created order. And this is that eternal covenant. Never again will this happen, says God. With a great deal of intervening history, between the creation narratives and the coming of Christ, today's gospel reading takes us to the ultimate unfolding of what that covenant would be, how God would act to redeem, how God would act to reconcile all creation to God in Christ Jesus. 
The first verse of St Mark's Gospel, just a few verses before this morning's reading, declares that what is to follow is the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ. This is Mark's declaration that here is the truth that God is faithful to the covenant that he made with his people Israel, sealed by the bow in the clouds, that as the prophet Isaiah foretold would be fulfilled in the one who would bring that good news. So here that covenant faithfulness is worked out in the child born in the manger. For the gospel writer, his concern is to demonstrate that in Christ, here is the one with the power to overcome the powers of oppression. Oppression for the first hearers of this gospel under Roman rule. And all the powers in the world that would rebel against God. No surprise then that just a few verses on in this first chapter of Jesus' public ministry, is an exorcism, the powers of evil dispelled. And so Mark begins by clearly identifying Jesus as the Son of God. That truth is clear, the one in his baptism upon whom the Spirit rests, and therefore the one with the power to overcome. As in the account of Noah, the waters of the flood overcame the power of evil, for a time, here Mark demonstrates by the account of Jesus' baptism that it is he who will overcome them forever. Here is the fulfillment of the covenant of old. And so then Jesus' experience resonates with that of Israel itself. Having walked through the waters, Jesus also walks into the wilderness for Jesus conquering the power of evil in the wilderness, summarized by Mark in one sh short verse, promises that victory for eternity. Given Mark's aim then, it's no surprise that having established Jesus' identity and his power to overcome all that would rebel against God, he gets straight into the beginning of his ministry showing the working out of that covenant. Jesus calls the people to repent and to believe and calls his first disciples to the work of the kingdom. Repent, believe, and walk the way of the kingdom of God. This is what it is to fulfill our part of this covenant of love. This is what it is to keep a holy Lent. Here then, Mark presents to his first hearers and to us, before the first half of the first chapter of his gospel is complete, that the promise is being fulfilled, that here is the Messiah, the Son of God, who knows the reality of the world into which he came, the powers of oppression, of those hearing this gospel and is victorious in the face of them. These are cosmic events. In this half chapter, in these short verses, full of the symbolism connecting past, present and future, connecting heaven and earth to demonstrate for those with ears to hear that the kingdom has come near. This is the message of the covenant, the promise that God has acted to reconcile all creation to himself once and for all in the cross and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that reconciliation is ours. Before the end of chapter one, Mark declares that truth to any who will stop to hear it and seek to understand. That assurance then is to each of us as we begin this Lenten journey and the invitation to us in response to this eternal covenant 
to return ourselves to Christ. As we begin our Lenten journey then, we are taken in the scriptures into the full story. It is signaled to us what this covenant means. And as Jesus called his first disciples, we see what we are invited into, what it looks like, just as Christ did to declare our faith in the waters of baptism, as Christ did in the wilderness to seek and to know the truth of God with us in our lives, whatever each day brings, and each to know our vocation, our call to serve God in the world. This is what it is to be holy. This is our calling as disciples of Jesus Christ. This is the covenant God invites us into and for God's world. And our Lenten calling to return ourselves by prayer and fasting, study of the scripture and loving service into this covenant to know its redeeming power for us and to remember our part in response. Waitangi Day in Aotearoa, New Zealand is a bank holiday. It is a national day. National leaders and hundreds of thousands of citizens travel to Waitangi where that treaty was signed. As the sun shines on that beautiful part of Aotearoa, New Zealand, I know many of you have been there and you can see why those settlers who first arrived thought, let's stop here, this looks pretty good. As the sun shines on that day, it is nonetheless a day of painful honesty about how the Crown and its successors have failed in their obligations under the treaty and the consequences of that for the nation of my birth. And the outcome of that day every year is let's try and do better, shall we, for one another and for this land. As we come to this Lenten journey with the full story of God's redeeming love, God's covenant laid before us, it is a chance for us to return ourselves, to be honest about our faithful part in that covenant, to commit ourselves in prayer, to be God's love for the world afresh. And as we turn, as we return our lives into God and Christ, we find the God who is faithful, the God who has covenanted in love to us and all creation, waiting to welcome us. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Lord. We believe in one. 
the cross and Easter. We give you thanks for your wonderful world and all your gifts, providing us with life in all its abundance. Help us to be good stewards of your creation so that future generations may continue to enjoy its benefits. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We hold before you your whole church, lay and ordained, here in this place and throughout the world. We pray for Alan, Richard and Jane, our bishops, and all who minister in this diocese. We ask your blessing on the Lent groups, both leaders and members, that sharing in discussion and prayer, they may grow closer to you and to each other. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Shepherd of your flock, we ask your blessing on us, our families and friends, our neighbours and the whole Abbey community, that we may love and support each other. We pray particularly for those named on the prayer list and any others known to us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In this broken world, we pray for healing and wholeness. Where there are divisions, help us to build bridges, not walls, so that your world may more closely reflect your will. Give wisdom to those who govern. Inspire them with your spirit to walk, work towards a fairer world where justice and mercy may flourish and your kingdom come on earth. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Suffering, Lord, you share in our suffering. We pray for all those in any kind of need, that in their time of trouble they will find succour. Give strength and comfort to those living in fear, affected by conflict and war, particularly in Gaza and Israel, the Democratic Republic of Congo and Ukraine. We pray for asylum seekers in this area, facing the closure of the Noak Hotel and an uncertain future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died recently, remembering in particular Gordon Cawthorn, Kenneth Churchill, Wendy Frost, Sam Green, Stephanie Hall, Anne Hamlin, Jane Jelly, Maura Moran, Ivo Mosley, David Parry, and any others known to us. Comfort those who mourn and give them your peace. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all them and all your saints, we commend ourselves and those for whom we pray to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers, prayers for, for the, the sake, sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ.
we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer, and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendor of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with saints and angels forever praising you and singing. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Savior of the world. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favor on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with Mary, Alban, and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. of God. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us, each praying in our own language. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat 
this bread and drink this cup. We proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
By it you nourish our faith, increase our hope, and strengthen our love. Teach us always to hunger for him who is the true and living bread, and enable us to live by every word that proceeds from out of your mouth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. you need is there to sign up. So we stand to sing now. Lead us, Heavenly Father, lead us. Take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace.